If you are serious about machine learning and you use the R programming language, you need to be aware of Tidy Models and the powerful features that it has to offer you. Tidy Models is the premier machine learning framework in the R programming language. It has the most active development, it gets all the latest and greatest features, and it really is the successor to the Carrot machine learning package. Carrot was the previous machine learning package in R. You will still find tons of examples, documentation for Carrot online, but Tidy Models really is the future. That's where R is really doing a lot of its machine learning development. So, if you're serious about machine learning, I think it's beneficial to know about Tidy Models. But what if you don't know about Tidy Models? Well, then this video is just for you. In about 15 minutes or so, I'm going to cover the key building blocks of getting a machine learning algorithm up and running using Tidy Models. This is a bare basics overview. So if you've watched other tutorials and they seem too complex or they're throwing too many things at you at once, and then hopefully you will find this a little bit more useful. With that being said, let's go ahead, let's jump in. The first thing we're going to want to do is install Tidy Models if you don't have it. So we're going to use the install.packages command on Tidy Models. Once we install Tidy Models, we will pull it into our workspace using the library command and what you'll notice is that this pulls in a lot of different packages and that's why I love Tidy Models so much. It is a collection of packages. So when we bring Tidy Models into the workspace, we have what we need to do machine learning. We don't have to go separately pull in 15 different packages. So we've got Tidy Models, all of our tools in the workspace. Now we need something to work on. So you can use whatever data you want. If you're working on real world data, you can import that using the import data set tab in our studio. You can bring your data in directly through the script, whatever the case is. But so this is easy so that we can all follow along. We're just going to use a simple inbuilt data set. That is the iris data set. It comes with R. It's available for you to use. So let's see what we're working with. Let's type head and then in parentheses, let's pass in the iris data set. And we can see here, this is just a simple data set of flowers. So we have the species of these flowers and that's one variable. And then we have other variables that are numeric measurements of the different components of the flower. So that's our data set. The first thing that we need to do before we start machine learning is to break our data into testing and training. Now, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you have a general understanding of machine learning, but for those of you who are not familiar with it, it is very different than traditional statistics that you might be used to. If you are in a traditional statistics class, you're going to take your entire data set, you're going to throw it into some kind of a test, and then you're going to look for p-values and t-statistics to tell you whether or not your results are statistically significant. With machine learning, we can actually assess the accuracy of our models using real world data, not just assuming it fits some kind of theoretical normal distribution, right? Which is super cool. But in order to do that, we have to break the data into a testing and training set. So we take the training data, we build up a model, we estimate parameters, we basically try to come up with an equation that describes how that data is behaving. The testing data is from the original data set, but we've not included that in building the model. So it is unseen to the model. What we do is we run the model then on that testing data to see how close our predictions were to the actual real world data. So it's a really cool, really awesome thing. But to do that, we have to break up the data set. And the way that we do that is by using the initial underscore split command. So first we need to come up with a variable name. You can call this whatever you want. I like using index because it gives us a pretty helpful idea of what's going on. So I'm going to use the index variable and then I'm going to use the assignment operator to assign that to the initial underscore split of the iris data set. So when I run this, it is going to use all the default values to break that data frame into testing and training data. Now, this is very simple. I'm just using the default split 
Whatever it says should go in training, should go in training. Whatever it wants to go in test, goes into test. In reality, you can specify the proportion that you want to go to training or testing. You can stratify. You can make this much more complex. What I'm showing you here today is the basics. And the basics do pretty good. Using the defaults will still get you pretty far. If you do want more in-depth, there's tons of tutorials online. I also offer a Udemy course where I do go more into depth if you're interested. At some point, I might put it on YouTube as well for those of you who are members. But we don't need to worry about that today. What we're worrying about today is continuing to break that data set apart. So what that index does is it basically identifies observations. You're testing, you're training, you're testing, you're training. We actually want to create separate data frames. And the way that we do that is, again, by creating a variable. You can call it whatever you want. I'm using training data and I'm going to type training index. So I'm passing in that index. This is key. I'm not passing in the underlying iris data set. I'm passing in that index because the index has been broken up according to testing and training and stratifying if we're doing that. It's important to pass in the index. So when we run both of those commands, you will see that it creates over here in the global workspace a testing data set of 38 observations, training data of 112. And again, it's just using the default proportion of what percent should go into training versus testing data. So we have our data. It is split up. Now we need a recipe. And this was one of the things that was the hardest for me to understand when I was learning about tidy models. I was thinking, what is a recipe? What are you doing? A recipe is exactly like what it sounds. You take a bunch of ingredients, you combine certain steps, and you get a finished product. That's what we're doing here. So let's look at a very simple example. So let's make this a little bit more simple here, actually. When we are creating a recipe, we need to, again, use a variable. You can call it whatever you want. You could call it steps to my data if you wanted. I'm using data recipe. We're going to type the recipe command. And then at a minimum, it requires two arguments. The first argument is the formula. This is telling tidy models what formula are we using. So on the left hand side, you see species. That is our dependent variable, our y variable. It is the variable that we're trying to predict. OK, where is that name coming from? It's coming from the column header of one of the variables in our data set. If we were trying to predict species, we would use species. If we were trying to predict petal width, we would put petal width where species is here. We then have a tilde. This is basically the operator, if you will. So everything to the left is the dependent variables. Everything to the right is the independent variables. So we're saying predict species based off of whatever comes after this. In this example, I'm doing sepal.length plus petal dot width. If I wanted more variables, I could add them in using the plus sign. If I just wanted to use all the data, right? I didn't want to do individual columns. I wanted all the data. I would simply put a period there, but we don't want to do that. So that's the equation. That's the formula. Then we have to tell it what data are we using. We are using the training data. So if we run that, that is a valid recipe. Tidy models will accept that. However, it's not really useful because we're not processing the data in any way. We're not taking advantage of these great features. So when we look at that, it just says we have one outcome, two predictors. What we really want to do is take advantage of these inbuilt features. So within tidy models for pre-processing, we can do a variety of transformations. We can normalize variables. We can create dummy variables. And the way that we get access to that is by using the pipe operator. So that's your percentage greater than percentage. We press enter and we go to step underscore. And I don't know how many there are. There's got to be over a hundred different transformations, things that you can do to your data that you don't have to do manually. You don't have to go through and manually rewrite these functions. They are here for you. So you can scroll through, you can find them. Let's suppose we just want to normalize. We do step underscore normalize. And then we have to tell tidy models, what are we doing this to? Are we normalizing the predictor and the dependent variable? Are we normalizing the numeric variables? What are we doing? 
you can start typing and it will give you suggestions. I'm going to do all underscore and you see here if I was working with date data um, I could normalize those I could do date time whatever the case what I want to normalize is all numeric and I could do all numeric or all numeric predictors which is what I want so let's go ahead and run that now when we look at that recipe let's see what we have here it's going to tell us one outcome variable two predictors and we are centering and scaling all numeric predictors now when we go to run our machine learning algorithm this happens in the background we don't need to worry about this it's going to do it as part of the recipe so that's the cool thing about tidy models every time we do the machine learning algorithm it's going to apply those transformations because they're part of the recipe and that's one of the things that i initially didn't understand so it's going to do that now if we did for some reason we just wanted to prove to ourselves that it was working that it was doing those transformations we could do that so let's take a look really quick at that initial testing data you can see here this is simple numeric values right and there are a couple different columns if we and i don't want to go too much into depth what's happening here but if we were to prep and then bake that recipe and then take a look at the example you could see that it does give us just the columns that we want as specified by the recipe and it does normalize those variables again we don't need to go too much in depth into that because you're never going to have to do that i'm just showing you that those transformations those recipes they do impact your data but again you're never going to have to manually prep and bake because it all happens behind the scene anyway. So I guess I shouldn't say never. There are maybe some examples where you might want to manually do it. But in general, it's not something that I have to do a lot. So we have our recipe. Now we need to set up the machine learning algorithm. And I'm going to show you first the hard way of doing it. And then I'm going to show you a way that's going to make your life super easy. So the hard way of doing it, we have to create a variable. And then we come up with a class of algorithm that we want to run so nearest neighbor rand forest decision tree whatever the case may be we tell it the class of model so we're doing nearest neighbor then we have to pass in at a minimum the mode and the engine so the mode is saying are we using this for regression are we trying to predict a numeric variable or classification are we trying to predict a categorical variable obviously we're predicting the species of a flower which is a category we're using classification engine is telling tidy models what specific algorithm do we want to use for this broad class of algorithms so just as an example if we're thinking about something like a random forest or a decision tree we could implement a variety of different ways of doing that broad class of model right so we're telling it here use this specific engine again if that sounds complicated do not worry i'm going to show you an easy way we could also this is the basics this is what we need we could also add in hyperparameters, other things but again this is the basics now i told you i was going to make it easy if you don't know one how to write a specification in tidy models or two you don't even know what models are supported you don't have to memorize this you can go to add-ins generate parsnip and what you can see here you can select between regression classification and then it literally gives you all the different supported models so if you were to want a random forest you would just click on it if you want to tune hyperparameters, you can. Once you click write specification code, it's automatically going to give you an example of that model that you can edit, that you can change to however you want. So let me show you an example of that. I'm going to click write specification code. And you can see here it has created, even with the variable name, it has created a random forest specification. It gives me what parameters are available for tuning. Again, this video is beginner we're not going into all of that i'm just showing you that it is there it does offer you more functionality than what i'm showing here so we've got a data we've got pre-processing recipe we have a machine learning model that we want to run we now combine these into a workflow again creating a variable name typing out workflow we then pass in the pre-processor which is our data recipe we pass in the spec which is the model specification the KN model we created let's go ahead and run that in and of itself oops why did we get an error the reason we got an error is because i didn't actually run this to create the variable now when we run this 
it creates the iris workflow and let's take a look at what's going on here we can see this tells us what's going on so we're using a recipe of normalizing the data we're doing a k nearest neighbor model specification so this is one thing that's really cool about tidy models this workflow it really brings everything together so you can see in an instant what steps am i doing for my data what kind of model am i running okay so now that we have the workflow set up we actually want to make some predictions how do we do that the thing i will tell you is that as with everything that i've shown you so far you can do it a lot of different ways even something as simple as setting up your model specification you could do this differently right there's a lot of different ways depending on your preference i'm going to show you what i think is the easiest there's going to be circumstances where you might want to do a different way but again this is a beginner video it will get you off the ground it will get you up and running so what we're going to do we're going to type last underscore fit and we're going to use the iris workflow right so we're telling this last fit method we're telling it we want you to perform this operation on what well we want you to perform it on this index we're not using the testing data we're not using the training data we're not using the iris data set we're using the index why are we using the index because remember the index knows what is training what is testing so this single command here it is going to run the model on the training data and then it is going to evaluate on the testing data so let's go ahead and run that we have here the final model and when we pull that up it doesn't look that impressive right it just doesn't look that impressive in order to find out what we're actually doing we want to look into these columns so you can see here we have the metrics column and the predictions column we can pull each of those out and look at it the metrics tells us that our accuracy is 0.974 and if we look at predictions we can actually see what we predicted right this predicted class versus the actual species so this is something that's invaluable because we can look at real data that the algorithm hasn't seen and we can say how close was our prediction right that's something that is really cool so that's just a quick overview of tidy models like i said this was very basic please do not think that this is all tidy models can do in my course for example i show you how you can take multiple different machine learning models combine them with hyperparameter tuning and even different recipes right so you don't know is a random forest the best model for this data is k nearest neighbors best should i normalize my values should i not normalize my values right you can take multiple combinations throw them into tidy models it will run through automatically and it will help you identify the most accurate machine learning method for your specific data so again tidy models is extremely powerful there's lots of free youtube videos out there if you do want to learn more about it you can obviously check out my course you're not obligated to but the key thing i want you to understand is that tidy models is much more powerful than this simplistic example the reason that i made it this simplistic is because i know when i was getting started a lot of the videos out there were very project oriented they would say hey we're going to take this data set we're going to gain this information from it and because they were doing everything as kind of a project towards an end goal as opposed to showing you this is why i'm using a recipe this is what a workflow is doing i found that it was a little bit harder to learn so hopefully this video helps you if you are starting your journey in tidy models so as always i do appreciate you watching i hope you found it useful and i will see you in the next one